The city says it's moving forward with the redevelopment of a historic blighted piece of prime New Orleans real estate. And neighbors in the uptown area have complained that the decay has led to unwelcome visitors in the past. David Jones joins us now with more on the future plans. David. Yeah, look, the question neighbors have been asking is what will become of the Sophie Gumbel building? It sits directly across from the Willow School in the heart of uptown New Orleans, and the city-owned facility has been vacant for years. Everybody in this neighborhood just loves it and wants it to be something nice. For now, it's in disrepair. Whoever comes in is going to have to do a fair amount of capital work to improve this building pretty dramatically since it's been underutilized for so long. It is just such a special, beautiful building. It's also become a strain on city resources. We've lived here for 10, 11 years. Neighbors say it's been home to vagrants in the past. Large protective sheets of metal cover entryways. There's some graffiti on the walls surrounding the Sophie Gumbel property located uptown on Loyola and Nashville. Vines grow alongside a rusted staircase. Signs of decay on an otherwise beautiful piece of architecture. I hope they find a great tenant because I know they're going to be renting it and not selling it. The building was donated by Sophie Gumbel to the city about 100 years ago. The Sophie Gumbel home was founded in the early 1900s, named after the wife of a German immigrant who was a prominent merchant and investor in New Orleans. It was opened as a home for the disabled, later donated to the city with the intent of continuing its mission. But some hurtful language was included in the original paperwork. It was for only for those who were white and deaf and dumb, words to that effect that are both obviously racist and insensitive. And look, we understand what the, what the intent now is, which is for people who have disabilities. Councilman Joe Geruso says there's a lot of interest from surrounding schools, universities, and health systems. The next step is how do we go through a public process about what this building could potentially be used for. The city says it's working with council and other partners to develop a request for proposals. DeRusso says it will keep the property and charge any potential tenants rent, although profiting is not the motive. It's been almost like a blighted property and trying to keep it up. And look, that's a perfect legitimate reason for why the city is really trying to work so hard right now to change all of this. Drusso says he expects a solicitation for potential vendors looking to redevelop the old Sophie Gumbel home to open to the public either February or March of next year.